Hi guys. Good evening. It's evening here on the East Coast. So good to be back with Silver Silk. Took a little break because Nile was doing some traveling. And um, so we, we went through the first little bit of the holidays. Now we've got the big one coming up. Christmas is coming. So today's project is definitely a Christmas project. Um, and if you are in the mood for even more Christmas, you guys go over to silversilkonline.com and pick up the Travels to Toyland. This mix, it just screams nostalgia. It's so good. It's, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. The bead mix and then that green capture chain. I love capture chain anyway, but the green for Christmas. Oh, I just love it. The bead mix is great. You can get the mystery mix and that's got a little bit of everything in it. You can also get the bead mix that was special from Jesse James Beads. Um, so you've got a little design elements mix, but then there is also some capture chain that goes with it as well. And that has all of the, um, the beads and the charms and things. There are some Tierra Cash charms in there. It's just a really, really awesome, awesome mix. And then you can buy the green capture chain I would grab the mystery mix just if it were me. Just saying. <laughs> hey, Jane. Um, but anyway, grab that if you have not had an opportunity to get it yet. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. It's just very, very, like I said, it, it's very nostalgic feeling. Um, I love that. I really kind of love that nostalgia of Christmas. And this is... It's not all toys, like I, I see the inspiration there, but it just reminds me of being a kid, but in a way that you can translate it into jewelry as a grown up. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying. But anyway, it's great. It's really awesome. Go grab that. And while you're at it, you might want to grab some of this beautiful vintage bronze hollow mesh that we are going to use in our project tonight. We're going to build a little Christmas tree. It's not hard. This is a pretty simple project. We're just going to use some 16 gauge wire for the armature of the tree. We're going to put some of this hollow mesh on it and then sculpt it into a very primitive looking tree. And then we're going to dress it up with some beads from Jesse James Beads. Um, so this is an easy project. We're using this one as a pendant, but you could hang this on your Christmas tree as an ornament. You could do two of these and make them earrings. So this is a really versatile project. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yes, Sylvia, the shelf, the shelf behind me is new. <laughs> I, I reorganized before we put the tree in this room. I rearranged everything and bought myself a metal shelf. And there's more shelves over here. You just can't really see them. But yeah, I was feeling a little cramped. So I've moved my, my desk here like about four feet forward and cleaned up everything behind me. So I don't feel like I'm trapped in a cave anymore. So all right, let's get to it, shall we? I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's do this. Yes, Joan, that is a lot of tools. I have a tool problem. I told you, I told you, I have to own, <laughs> I have to own them all. I, I love tools almost as much as I love beads. All right, you guys, so we are going to use this really, really beautiful vintage bronze hollow mesh, and I usually use capture chain for a lot of my projects, but I really needed the hollow mesh for this, and um. I was originally going to do this in gold and I don't know I was playing around with this this bronzy color and really fell in love with it so it's up to you what color hollow mesh you want to use for this but I'm just a sucker for this vintage bronze I'm gonna actually run some gold colored wire through this so you are still gonna get that really cool gold um, but the vintage bronze it really it kind of goes along with the uh, Travels to Toyland. It just gives you that kind of vintage feeling to it. It's really, it's really something. So if you've not had a chance to get any hollow mesh and play with it, I highly recommend grabbing some of that. Um, hollow mesh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it is 36, hold on, that's not right. <laughs> it's six 36 gauge, 
wires that have been knitted together and they're permanently enameled. So that color that you see, that rich bronze color, that's permanent. That's not gonna flake off. You're not gonna have to worry that this is going to turn on you. It is gonna retain that beautiful warm color that is there. All right, so you're gonna need a little bit of this. I've cut myself about two feet. That's really too much, but I'm one of those better have more than not enough. You're also gonna need some 16 gauge wire for this. I'm using gold color. You can use artistic wire for this or you can use German style wire if you can find it in that 16 gauge. Um, I actually think mine is artistic wire. I'm not really certain of that. I just grabbed it. <laughs> so it's more than anything, you just want whatever you're comfortable working with that has that beautiful gold color. You could use silver with this, but I feel like that gold color inside the bronze is really gonna make it nice and warm. Look at that. See what happens when you run them together? It just creates this really beautiful golden bronze. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna thread this on to our piece of 16 gauge wire. And we're, we're actually gonna create our Christmas tree with the mesh on it. I've tried this two different ways. I tried it creating the Christmas tree first and then adding the hollow mesh to the wire. And you can do it that way if you are not comfortable with um, you know working with the hollow mesh with your pliers. But I found that it was just easier to go ahead and thread it on to the 16 gauge wire and then shape the wire. But it really does work either way, okay? All right, so hold on before I move forward. Joan asked, where is Neele? I am not sure. He probably will be here in just a little bit. I have not spoken to him since yesterday. So hopefully he knows I'm here. <laughs> No, he does, he does. All right, so you wanna go ahead and thread that on your wire. And the very first thing we're gonna do is we are going to let a little tail end of the wire poke out here just for a second. We're gonna turn a loop. I'm gonna use my round nose pliers for this. If you prefer to use your bell making pliers for this, you can, um, you can use your small bell making pliers as well. Yes, Suzanne, you can use 18 gauge wire for this as well. I used the 16 just because it was a little more sturdy, but you definitely can use the 18 gauge. It, it works really well on the inside of the hollow mesh too. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create just a, a loop here at the end. We're just gonna make that, that nice P shape. I'm gonna use my chain nose, or I'm sorry, my round nose pliers to do that. And I want this to be a rather large loop. So I'm gonna use the back portion of my pliers to do that. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the tail end of that wire and just roll it around to create this little P shape, okay? And then I'm just gonna sl slide that hollow mesh right up to the edge of that, okay? If you wanted to go ahead and open this up and slide this all the way around, you could, but because I'm gonna attach this to some jump rings and or other metal, depending on what you're gonna use this for. I wanted to leave this top loop just the bare wire, okay? All right, so now this is the part where you get to be really, really creative and kind of decide what you want your tree to look like. We're just gonna do this in a series of turns using our round nose pliers or your bell making pliers, whatever you're more comfortable using. And let me show you what we want it to look like. So we're really just gonna kind of snake this around. This is a really, really easy, there's nothing really hard to this. It's just placing your your pliers, your round nose pliers back and forth and kind of guiding the wire around. And then you can clean this up with your fingers when you're done and really give it the shape that you want. So this is with that vintage bronze hollow mesh. I did do one in the gold just to show you a different color option and a little bit of a different shape. So if you wanted to use that gold hollow mesh to do this, you could do that as well. And you can see just how different the trees are going to look. Every one of these is going to look different. You're never going to get two that are exactly alike, but that's what I like about them. It really gives them some character and makes them very, very unique. So once we get to this point, then we're going to dress this up with some beads. So this is not the final piece. Okay, so what we're going to do 
give myself a little bit of room. It helps if you can straighten your wire out as much as possible, just so that it's not, it's not wanting to hit you in the face, <laughs> what I've kind of been struggling with all afternoon. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is create the very first two little turns in the wire up here right at the top. So I wanna use, again, the back portion of my round nose pliers for this. And you can see I'm just coming down the same width as my pliers from that first loop. And I'm being really, really gentle because I don't wanna crush the mesh, okay? And I'm just gonna guide that wire around and take the pliers away and you can see I'm just creating just another little hook here okay and that's all there is to this you just want to come back in with your pliers in a different place just kind of widening sorry kind of widening it up each time and all you're doing is just creating a simple bend in the wire there's no wrapping involved. There's not really anything. That was actually farther over than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna straighten this back out just a bit. I'm gonna keep that first loop. And you can always do just like I'm doing. You know, if you don't like where that, that bend was, you can come in, straighten it out and do it again. Place it exactly where you want it. Kind of play around with your pliers to figure out the spacing that you want a little better. I just want the top of the tree to be more narrow, obviously, and then I can turn this loop this direction a little bit too. That's going to open up some of the spacing here. So it's really free form, which I think is fun. All right, so you're just going to alternate back and forth. So now I'm back over here on the other side, just kind of creating an S shape the wire just taking it off giving it a look to see how it looks we can always change this later hi Karen you haven't miss, missed much we're just getting started here okay so I like that I want this one to come out and be just a little bit bigger on that side okay take a look at it just snaking it around and you can make this as big as you want. Like you can get really, really crazy big with this. The biggest problem I have is that the wire <laughs> keeps getting right in my face every time I turn and I'm trying not to knock the camera out of the way. So that's what we've got so far. Let's, let's take a look at the one that we've already got. So we're getting pretty close, but you can see where, where I stopped down here. Instead of stopping, you could just keep going and building this out as big as you wanted it to be. Like particularly if you were making an ornament for your Christmas tree and you wanted this to be bigger than just pendant sized. There's another, let's see. We want one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Let's go again. Just coming down, making your turn, and then we're really going to kind of change this up a little bit. Because you can see how straight everything is. That's not the look that I want, but we have to, we have to get that shape first before we can do anything else to it. All right, so this is, that's the size that I want. Okay, and you can see I've still got a lot of this hollow mesh and wire left. I'm gonna leave that for just a second before we cut any of this off. And you can see it looks even diff even more different than the other one. They're close, but not exactly. But you can see how this one is pinched. That's what we're gonna do now. So what I want, actually, let's go ahead and turn the loop and then we'll do the pinching. So you can see on this one where there's a loop at the bottom I want that loop on the bottom so that I have the ability to hang things here if I want to. You don't have to, but I am going to hang a bead from mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the middle of this one in the on the very bottom, and I'm just going to guide my wire and that hollow mesh all the way around to create a loop. Mine's a little off-center. That's okay. I'm cool with that. Doesn't bother me a bit. Let's go ahead and trim this off and then make some adjustments here. So I'm just gonna use my flush cutter 
and I just want to trim that cutting through the mesh and that artistic wire that's in there and you may have to come back in and kind of clean up the ends of the hollow mesh and if you want to trim this down you can do that too you can close this loop up a little bit more it's really kind of up to you how you want to finish this off, but you can see where I've started to fray just a little bit. I just like to trim those little guys off. And then, just so that it doesn't fray anymore on the end, hold on, trim those little guys off. So I like to come in with either my bent chain nose pliers or just your regular chain nose pliers. And right at the end of your hollow mesh, I like to just kind of give it a squeeze. You can even just do this with your fingers too if you can get in there and just squeeze it up against the surface of the artistic wire or whatever kind of wire you've got in there just to kind of hug it on, okay? So that there are not any pieces that are really, you don't have any stragglers. Okay, so now we are gonna get a little bit more creative with this because if if this is the look that you like then go for it you can just go on to the next step from here but we are yes Jane we're gonna zhuzh we're gonna zhuzh just a little bit so I like to have it look kind of pinched in between so in order to get that look I over bend on all of these and it doesn't matter if you go behind or in front of whatever works for you you can squeeze this whole little thing down like an accordion okay you can see where I'm overlapping and then pulling and then I'm just gonna pull it back out give it a look see how we like it if it needs some more pinching we can give it some more pinching I'm gonna adjust the loop here because I want it to be more up and down I like that but really just kind of play with it and the 16 gauge wire that I'm using is pretty soft, but if you're using the 18 gauge wire, it's even more malleable. So you can really get some deep pinching in there if that's, if that's what you want it to look like. I do kind of like it though. I like that pinched in between look. It just keeps it from looking like a racetrack, you know? It, just, it doesn't just look like a trail. All right. Okay, and then once we add the beads to this too, you can go after you've added the beads, you can come back in and adjust the wire a little bit more as well. All right, you can separate it out more if you want to. Just kind of play with it a little bit and get it in the shape that you want it to be. And like I said, no two of these are going to be exactly alike. And I've tried, but they just aren't. No matter what you do to it, they're all going to look different. And that's, I'm cool with that. So you can see they're pretty close, but they're not exact. All right. So now what we're going to do, we have some 24 gauge wire and I've cut myself, um, let's see, about seven of these. They're just three and a half to four inches long, doesn't take a whole lot. But we are gonna individually wire wrap the beads onto each one of the little edges of our Christmas tree here so that we've got, it looks like ornaments going up and down each side. And we're gonna do that one bead at a time. I'm using some green and red and this really pretty kind of hematite color. It's not a dark hematite. These beads came from the Tis This Season bead mix from Jesse James Beads. I love the little tiny beads that are in that mix and they are the perfect size for this. So let's start with one of the red beads. I just like to take my bead and thread it on to the 24 gauge wire. You can use 26 for this too if you want to. And what I want to do is I just want to lay that bead into that space the open space here in this first little turn in the wire. And then I wanna use either side of my wire to gently wire wrap this on. And you don't have to get crazy, crazy tight with your wire wrapping here. It's not gonna take much to get the beads to stay. 
I do want my wire wraps to be nice and close together though because I don't want the wire wraps to distract from anything else that's going on. So there's three wraps here. Just wanna bring that to the back and trim it off. Okay, so it's wire wrapped on the bottom. Now I want it to, I need to wire wrap it on the top as well. And the great thing about this really thin gauge wire is that it is so bendable, it's so flexible that you can get it around really, really gently without, you don't have to fight with it. Anything bigger than a 24 gauge, you're really gonna struggle getting it in between the spaces because I'm working in kind of a, a tight space here. All right, just take that to the back and cut it off. Now, if you wanted to use one long piece of wire <clears throat> and wire wrap the beads all on one piece of wire, but in the sections, you know, just this, a continual wire wrap that steps up, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, I just found that it, it was more, it took more time than it was worth <laughs> for me. I'm all about instant gratification jewelry and it was just too fussy for me. So. I figured the the easiest way to do this was with individual pieces instead of working with one piece and wire wrapping up the entire tree. So, but it's totally up to you. It's whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna add one of these little flocked green beads and I'm just gonna work on one side of the tree and then we'll come back down the other side. And I am not particular about where the wire wraps go. I don't care if, if they're on the inside or the outside or if they match or any of that. None of that matters to me because in the end, this tiny little wire is really just kind of disappear into the design and it's not really going to make much of a difference one way or another. Okay, so there were three wraps on the bottom. Just going to trim that off. And now I'm going to do three wraps on the top working in a real small space here, so sometimes it helps to use your pliers to get a hold of that wire. Yes, you could do seed beads on this. It would look really amazing with seed beads. You Once you get these beads on here, then you could really kind of go crazy with this if you wanted to. Just for time's sake, I just wanted to show you kind of the, the basic design of this but we're just going up these little spaces on either side but there's still this whole middle here where you could put seed beads you could put crystals some Swarovski running through here would be really really beautiful okay so there's the green I do too, Kathy. I agree with you. It keeps the shape better. Once you start, uh-oh, I don't want to lose a bead. Once you start with one piece of wire and you start to put stress on that one piece of wire, it does tend to tug on the shape of your tree and it'll squeeze it down and then it really makes it difficult at the end to get it back to the shape that you want because you've kind of locked it in place when you've just used one single piece of wire. Your branches are not nearly as flexible anymore. You can't really mess with them. You have to be precise and get it exactly where you want it. And it was just, to me, it just wasn't worth it. If that's, you know, if that's something that you want to do, then definitely go for it. It's not that it's not possible because it totally is. But if you're into quick and easy and getting something really cute together, I would just cut a few pieces of wire and be done with it. All right, there's that one. And you'll notice I'm not being particular about my wire wrapping. I, I know I kind of said that already where I don't care if it's on the inside or the outside of the bead. My wraps are close together, but they're not, you can see the spaces in there. I try to squeeze it a little bit but I'm really not all that concerned with it. Once you look at it from far away, it really, that part of the, of the design just kind of disappears. All right, one more bead for this side and then we're gonna work our way down the other side and then we're gonna put a little dangle on this just to give it some extra movement. 
and then you can decide what it is that you want to use this as because it would look really cool to make two of these and have them as earrings and I almost did that and then I thought no nope, I make a lot of earrings let's just turn it into a pendant and use some capture chain so I'm gonna hang mine on some gold capture chain Yes, Sylvia, that is a great idea. I love it. I love it. I love it when we do a project and you guys come up with things that I didn't even think about too. Because I was thinking you could hang this on the tree as an ornament, but Sylvia said you could use this as an embellishment on a package. That would be awesome. This would definitely really, really make it a personalized gift. That would be so pretty. I like it. I like that idea. So there are all the beads on one side. Don't want to forget to trim my wire off back here. Okay. All right, so on the other side, I'm going to skip this top loop right here just because it's so close to this other one. It kind of takes away the shape of the tree at the top. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, if I put the other bead here, it's just too crowded and it, it makes the whole rest of the design look kind of funny. So we're going to skip this loop area here and we're going to step down to this one. And let's see, let's use the green. Is that what we want to do? Green and then the red. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Let's see. How shall we do this? I just kind of figure out my bead order. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, let's go with the green. <laughs> I know, Kathy, it really has a really vintage look. That vintage bronze hollow mesh, I love it. I just, I really, really love it. I forgot that I had it. Neele had asked me what I had left in my stash um, of silver silk. And I was like, well, I've got some gold and I've got some black. And then I came across this bronze color. I had completely forgotten about it. And <clears throat> I think it just works really, really well with this deep red and this green color. Something about it just really... I don't know. Because usually when you think of a Christmas tree, you think of, you know, green or... If you're talking about jewelry, a lot of times you're, a lot of people go with gold and it does look really, really good with the gold, but there was just something about that bronze that it just needed to be a tree for me. <laughs> it was kind of a strange choice, I guess, but I think it turned out really beautiful. All right, so there's that one. We've got two more to go. That's okay, Pam, you're here now. <laughs> you can always catch the replay it's really this is a really easy project it's just a a good starting point you can really take this to a whole nother place when you try it on your own for sure okay just gonna trim that off So, unfortunately, I'm just going to chat a little bit with you guys while I'm wire wrapping these last two beads. Um, I had two packages stolen off my front porch. Can you believe that? Who would do that? And that's not the first time that's, that it's happened. It happens in this neighborhood every year. And it happened the first year that we lived here. And the guy actually got caught. The police caught the guy that did it. And he had destroyed all of the packages that he got from this neighborhood. But um, this time around, I don't think the guy is going to get caught. Um, and I'm pretty sure my packages are just gone for good. So it's just so frustrating. Because I'm, I'm here during the day. And... So I usually keep a really good eye on the front porch, particularly when I'm waiting for packages, you know. I don't know how it is that they got taken off the porch and I didn't notice. I have two huge dogs and a tiny little chihuahua and they definitely let me know anytime there is somebody around. But 
This really kind of bummed me out. <laughs> but outside of that, I am about 95% done with my Christmas shopping. I'm looking forward to being completely finished so that I can enjoy the holidays. There we go, guys. Last bead. Last bead on there. Let's trim off. And then let's put a little dangle on the bottom. And then I'm going to run this on a piece of capture chain. But I'm going to let you guys kind of decide what it is that you want to do with your own. I have a feeling you guys are going to do some really creative things with this. So... Like we were talking about before, we've got all this empty space in the middle, and you don't have to fill this up if you don't want to. I like it just like it is, but you could add more beads. There's room here to add seed beads in there. You could add crystals in there. You could really get very, very creative with this and fill this entire tree up if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave mine just like that, and we're going to add a little dangle at the bottom just for an extra little bit of movement. I thought about putting a tassel here, but I don't know. It just kind of detracted from the tree. It made it, it just, I, mean, I don't know. It just didn't work. If you want to use a tassel, you totally can. You can skip this part completely if you want, but I like to have extra movement on things. So I'm going to use a piece of 22 gauge wire, and we're going to create our little knotted head pin for this. So I'm taking the very end of my 22 gauge wire and I'm just rolling it around the very tip of my round nose pliers once and again. And I want to stop right where my wire is cut. So just twice around taking the wire and bending it out this direction. And then I'm going to take the tail end of the wire and go back through the two loops that I made. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my nylon jaw pliers and hold on to that wire. Let me move this <clears throat> right up against the two loops. And taking another pair of pliers, I'm just going to pull. And that is going to create that cute little rosette shape. And we've got ourselves a little head pin for our bead. So I'm just going to thread my bead on. I love this bead. It looks like candy to me. I've never seen gold candy, but <laughs> it reminds me of a red hot. I think that's why I like it so much. If it didn't have that gold on the bottom, it would look just like a red hot. All right. Grabbing that wire right at the top as it is exiting the bead. Bend that wire 90 degrees. Come in with the round nose pliers up and over, adjusting my grip and on around, switch hands, and then wire wrap. And you can see I had way more wire than I needed for this, but that's okay. So there's our wrapped loop. I'm going to trim off the tail. Okay, and now I'm going to add this to the bottom, and I'm going to use a jump ring to do that. I'm going to put a jump ring on the bottom and a jump ring on the top. You could um, create a really nice bail up here at the top with wire if you wanted to. I'm just going to stick with my standard jump rings just to save some time. So that's on the bottom. And then let's put a slightly larger jump ring up here on the top just so that I've got a jump ring that I know is has a big enough opening to thread the capture chain through. Oh, yum. Kathy, me too. I love Red Hots. I like them in my apple cider. And I take Red Hots, I'll take a whole package of Red Hots and melt them on the stove and then chop up apples in just like little bite-sized bits. And a little tiny, tiny bit of extra sugar and let my apples simmer in that red hot sauce. Oh, it's so good, so good. That reminds me of my childhood. Like that just kind of screams Christmas to me is those red hot apples. I love that so much. Wish I had some of that right now. So I just thread this on to some of the gold capture chain just to bring more of that gold out that is in the inside of that bronze hollow mesh. You could use just a regular piece of um, 
chain for this if you wanted to. You could thread this on to silk. You could thread this onto leather if you wanted to. Really, the possibilities with this are, are really kind of endless. And if you didn't want this to be a pendant, you could make two of these and make earrings. You could probably make the earrings a little bit smaller. This is kind of a large, because we were making a pendant, this is on the large side. So I'm not so sure that I would want this as an earring being as big as it is, but on a smaller scale, this would make some really cute earrings. Or just like you guys mentioned, you could put this on a package, you know, attach this to your gift wrap. That would be awesome. Or hang it on your Christmas tree as an ornament. I think it would be really cool too. So it's one of those things that you play around with it. You come up with something that you really, really like, and then you can just really go crazy with this. Add extra beads put it on your tree, hang it in the window. It would be really cute to catch the light, a really pretty sun catcher. So there you go. I'll hold it up for you guys here in just a second so you can see it. Let me grab a bust. Hold on just a second. That was the one thing I forgot to grab before the video today. Hi, Rita. Oh yeah, it would be awesome as on on a napkin ring, that would be really cool. All right, let me flip you guys back, whoa, back around, bright lights. All right, so let me hold this up on this for you guys so that you can see what it looks like up against white. It kind of makes a difference. It's one thing to see it laying down flat, but then it's another thing to like actually see it on a bust hanging so that you can get an idea what it's gonna what it's gonna look like isn't that cute i just loved it i just thought it was the cutest kathy you are right you could hang this on a wine bottle Ooh, that would be a really good hostess gift if you were going to a christmas party or any kind of holiday party work parties i know those are there are a ton of those coming up work parties drive me crazy not <laughs> not for me my husband's work parties <laughs> they drive me crazy um, there's always like two or three that we have to go to and this would be a really great thing to just as a topper for a bottle of wine That would look so good Yep, yep, yep. So that was cute. It's really easy This was not a hard one to do you guys But just to give you extra ideas that you can take them and run with them You can do anything with this and that simple tree design You saw how easy that was it was just a series of turns in the wire you could very easily take the same design and translate it into a springtime tree or a fall tree. It doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. It could be any kind of tree that you wanted to. You could sharpen up the edges on this and make it even a more structured kind of pine tree look if you wanted to. Instead of making a curve, you could make actual sharp bends in the wire as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this design. So... Bobby's bottle says, I guess we aren't fancy enough. Our napkins are torn off paper towel roll. That's me. That's me. <laughs> I like to think that I'm fancy with napkin rings, but I'm, I'm, I'm so a paper towel girl. <laughs> That's all right. Yep. And the wine has a screw off cap. Oh, after my own heart. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for joining me. It was so much fun. I love being here. Um, let me know what time, and Neela, you too, let me know what time works best. I picked 6.30 um, just because this is the same time slot that Neela uses on Tuesdays for the Tuesday tutorials. Uh, if that doesn't work for you guys, let me and Neela know because we can totally adjust this time. It really doesn't make much of a difference to me. The only reason that I'm asking is because... I want to be available <laughs> for you when you guys are available. You know what I'm saying? Like 6.30 on the East Coast on a Thursday, Tuesdays, Mondays and Tuesdays are good, but on a Thursday, a lot of people are like over it. You know what I mean? Not like over the jewelry, but they're over the week. So <laughs> I hope not. I hope you guys come around and stick around. We can stick at the 6.30 or not. You guys just let us know anything. I'm flexible. I can do whatever you guys want me to do. Um, just so long as you keep me around and we keep making fun things together. All right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the night. Have a beautiful weekend. I'm hoping the weather is going to be good here. 
I will see you guys again next week. You can catch me tomorrow actually at 1 p.m. on Sarah Ellis Designs. I'm gonna be making another pendant. I'm in a pendant kind of mood. So I'm making another pendant. And then you can catch me uh, next week too and definitely catch Neelay on Tuesday for his tutorials. Don't forget about the travels to Toyland. If you guys have not had the opportunity to see that one, up close and in person, go over to silversilkonline.com and check it out because it is amazing. It really is. It's really, really beautiful. And I'm really interested to see what you guys come up with with it. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful night. I will let you go. I will see you guys again soon. Bye guys.